All right, my friends, here we are again for our session 10 lesson video, I guess. Yeah, so I'm going to deliver this today. Um, I know you'll probably only, because today is a little funky um, with the Fall Fest and everything happening, I want you to recognize that I, I need you to try to get through whatever you can today. You will have time to finish up the work for Session 10 on Monday, but it would be super, super beneficial if you guys can get through this video and at least start the work, um, because we are going to have to boogie next week to get all of this stuff done done um, with our Friday off next week and everything. That'll be pretty amazing. Um, so at any rate, we are doing session 10. Um, I'm going to go ahead and deliver this stuff. And you, as you know, you may have to come back to do some of the work, um, you know, at a different point in time or maybe even Monday, depending on what you get to. All right. So today is just about summarizing complex text. This is a pretty straightforward lesson. I'm going to show you some examples of things. Um, this is just a really good practice to get into when you're doing research, especially when you're researching something you don't know an awful lot about, because it can also help you to just have these little blurbs um, to know what is contained in each article so that you can go back and reference it once you start writing. So like it says, um, teaching point is one way to hold on to any text is to summarize it. To do this, it helps to read a chunk of text thinking what's most essential here and then reduce the text to just the most essential points. In other words, a summary. All right, so what goes into the summary? We need to have a central idea or a main idea for sure. And then we also have to have some of the most important details. A summary is not a retelling. A retelling would be telling you everything that you just read all over again. We are not doing that. This is a summary. This is supposed to be short and sweet and helpful to you as the researcher. If this is just another thing for you to end up doing um, and, it, and, and it takes you forever to do it and you're not sure how to do it, then maybe this is not the way for you to go. I do want you to practice it today, to try it out, see if it is something that helps you understand or keeps you more organized. Um, but it's also gonna be one of those things, like I always say, whatever works works best for you is what I want you to do. Some people this might work well for, some people it might not work as well for. It might not. It might be harder to write the summary than it's worth if that makes sense. So I do want you please um to you are going to all do it today um just to practice it to try the skill out um and then we can make some decisions from there on what researching looks like for each of you individually. All right, so I'm going to read this uh, this little article here. It's kind of long because it's got tons of little writing. You'll notice that I wrote, I highlighted a couple of things, but not a ton. Um, and then we're going to move forward with the information out of this. Again, I'm sticking with my genetically modified uh, organism stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and read this aloud. Follow along with me, guys. Thousands of people recently took to the streets in 400 cities worldwide. The cause of their anger? Not oppressive governments, unemployment, or income inequality, but apples that don't brown when sliced, and corn that's bred to fight off insects. In short, GMOs, genetically modified organisms. In Los Angeles, protesters chanted, hell no, GMO. In Strasbourg, France, demonstrators held a minute of silence in front of the European Parliament. And in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, people accused GMO producers of bioterrorism. GMOs are organisms whose DNA has been combined with a gene from an unrelated species to produce a desired trait. Some crops are genetically modified to survive herbicide sprays that kill weeds. Others are engineered to be more nutritious. A pink pineapple awaiting U.S. government approval has the same antioxidant that makes tomatoes red and may help prevent cancer. In November, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved the first genetically modified animal, a salmon engineered to grow to market size in about half the time as a regular salmon. But GMOs haven't been very popular lately. Only 37% of Americans think they're safe to eat, according to the Pew Research Center. McDonald's recently refused to use a new genetically modified potato that produces less of a cancer-causing chemical when fried. 
Chipotle dropped GMOs from its U.S. offerings, and General Mills stopped using GMOs in original Cheerios after a year-long campaign by environmentalists. I don't think we know enough. While some, GM, some see GMOs as frankenfoods that hurt the environment and us, others see them as the most promising solution to feeding the world's population, which is expected to skyrocket from 7 billion today to 10 billion by 2050. The government agencies regulating GMOs in the U.S. say they're not, or say they're safe, but some scientists and consumers argue that GMOs haven't been around long enough for us to know their long-term health effects. We're putting genes into crops that have never been in the food supply before, says Doug Grurian Sherman, a scientist at the Center for Food Safety, a nonprofit organization opposing GMOs. I don't think we know enough. The first GMO, a tomato that ripened without softening, was sold in the U.S. in 1994. It was later taken off the market. In 1996, soybeans and corn that resist herbicides and kill pests were introduced. Both crops proved extremely popular with farmers. Today, 94% of soybeans and 93% of corn planted in the U.S. is genetically altered, and most of it ends up in processed foods. According to the Grocery Manufacturers Association, up to 80% of what you eat has GMOs, but you might not know it. Unlike the European Union and places like India and Russia, the U.S. doesn't require foods with GMOs to be labeled. That whoop, let's go to the top. Bothers Lena Romal, Romaldini. Rom, whoa, Romaldini, a 21-year-old senior at the University of New Hampshire, who tries to buy only organic foods. She fears that altering the DNA of plants, plants is a bit like playing God, with a host of unwanted consequences for the environment. I think we're just digging ourselves into this hole that we're not going to be able to get out of. She says. But GMO proponents say people like Romaldini don't have all the facts. GMOs have positive, positive environmental effects, says, I have no idea how to say that guy's name, a GMO expert at the University of Arizona. Scientifically, they are positive and safe. More of that argument, eh? A boon to farmers? That guy also argues that bug-killing crops are beneficial because they reduce the use of insecticides, which can harm people and the environment. Between 1996 and 2011, bug-killing corn reduced insecticide use in corn production by 45% worldwide. Developing crops that can survive dry climates, others say, could help us grow food as climate change makes the planet more prone to droughts. Such crops could make a difference for drought-stricken states like California. Marlena Johnson, a 16-year-old who works on her family dairy farm in Orange, Virginia, says that GMOs are key to farmers. Her family depends on the genetically modified corn and soybeans they grow to feed their 170 milk cows. GMOs have helped our production, she says. But some scientists fear gem GMOs hurt the environment. Herbicide-resistant crops have allowed farmers to use more herbicides to kill weeds. That has had serious unintended consequences, says Grorian Sherman at the Center for Food Sa Safety. Monarch butterfly populations have declined by 90% because their food source, a weed called milkweed, has been decimated, he says. And, like insecticide, herbicide can harm people. Whether GMOs prove to be a temporary experiment depends on who you ask. Some think consumers will have the final word on whether GMOs succeed or fail. Others believe that with a warming world and growing population, we don't have a choice. I think that genetically modified crops are here to stay, says Michael Gray, a GMO expert at the University of Illinois. They do offer enormous potential, but they are just a tool and we need to keep that in mind. All right, so like I said, guys, that's a long one. 
okay a lot of different things that I was picking up on there a lot of mention of this back and forth debate about whether or not GMOs are safe so that must be a pretty hot button issue I also saw that a bunch of different companies were dropping GMOs um, from usage uh, within their businesses um, and I also saw um, a lot I saw some things some benefits and some uh, negatives as well so here we go we're gonna create a brief summary of the text the first thing you have to do is what's the author's central idea then you've got to come up with some ideas that support the central idea and then you have to say those them back to you so these guys down here I want you to think about these more like details that support that central idea Okay, so once we get that that created, and if you think about it, guys, um, box and bullets, maybe? Oh, check it out. I know you guys know what that is. Once we have a box and bullets created, then we can make a short paragraph for our summary. So let's see how I did. So first, I went ahead and made my box and bullets. My central idea up here, your box, if you will, is that people feel very different ways about GMOs. Absolutely true. I got that from that article. Then I have a detail. Many think that they're harmful. Some think that they could solve world problems. And some people think we don't have enough information. So this is like negative plus and question mark pretty much, right? That's how we feel about it. I'd say that that pretty much summarizes everything that was covered in the, uh, in the story. So let's see if I can throw that together now. So I took my plan that you just saw a minute ago and I went down here and wrote a quick summary. You'll notice that I referenced the article, the author, and I talk about how the author of the article is leading people to believe things, okay? So you'll notice it says the author of this article leads readers to believe that, excuse me, there are a variety of opinions regarding GMOs. These opinions span a broad spectrum of beliefs on whether or not GMOs should even be used. On one end, some believe that GMOs could be the answer to many of our world's problems, but others warn that the use of GMOs is harming our environment and bodies. The author also shared that others simply don't know because of the lack of information and data. The article makes it clear that people disagree about the use of GMOs. All right, so I want you to notice here, check it out. We've got up here and down here, we restated it. You've got that central idea, right? Central idea and central idea. Then when we go in here, you'll notice we have the positives, we have the harming, the negatives, and then we have the question mark. So everything from this is now put together with sentences down here. Okay. Again, like I said, this might be a strategy that works really well for some of you. It might be a strategy that just causes more work for the rest of you. I don't know. It's going to take you trying it out and seeing if it works for you or not. I love having these little summaries written after I've read something because I have a really horrible memory and it's really hard for me to remember like which articles are which when I'm going through a bunch of resources. So this is a really easy way for me to remember. Something else you can do, guys, um, if you're having trouble, you could always try to, like, um, you always want to make sure that you include your author in the summary, like I did up there, and you could also, like, be, be ranking those main ideas just to come up with, like, which ones you think you have the most information to support in your summary with the details and such. Here's just another example where somebody was doing, uh, it's kids are able to make a difference if they put their mind to it. And then they showed three different examples of kids who made a difference. And then they went ahead and created it into a summary. So that's just another example for you. And then we get to our work for today. So today in workshop, you're going to make a plan. Um, so you're going to get more resources. So you've already looked at a couple from yesterday and from uh, Tuesday. Now you're going to get more resources in that padlet and you're going to decide which ones you're going to read what subtopic you're actually tr 
tracking from your little web the other day and how you're going to organize your notes. So you're going to set yourselves up for success. This is like that level yellow. Then you're going to move into the level green where you're going to actually start reading the articles and jotting notes. So I want you to make sure as you're doing this that you are trying to come up with after you read it, I want you to try to come up with that box and the bullets, and then you're going to go on to the summary, okay? So you're going to make your plan, you're going to read and jot, you're going to make a box of bullets, and then you're going to move into that summary. For your research roadmap today, that's exactly what you have to show me on slide four. You're going to do the session 10 work. You'll notice there was a really quick summary written over here. We got a picture of it, and then we've got our what I did and what I learned. So again, get your note taking done with your couple of resources. I would say pick two or three again today and then go in and show that work in your research roadmap. All right. So again, today, guys, same thing as yesterday. We said that the first thing you needed to do was watch the lesson, right? You are officially getting done with that. The second thing you have to do is read resources and jot notes. From there, you need to create a box and bullet for each article that you read. And from there, you need to summarize the article. All right. That is your work for today. Like I said, I'm super happy you got through the video at this point in time. I want you to probably pick out your resources and maybe start reading them today. Um, and then we can finish up that work on Monday. So again, guys, do the very best you can. I believe in you. I know you guys can do this. It's hard work, but you are fully capable. So please do your very best work today. Behave for our guest teacher. And I will see you guys on Monday. All right, guys. Love you. Bye. Mwah.